Hey guys, Mort here, and today I want to talk about three common mistakes that I see pixel artists do a lot, and a few tips to how you can avoid them. So the first topic I want to talk about, and probably the most common thing I see from new pixel artists, is doubles. So what is doubles? Well, doubles are basically when these pixels line up next to each other on a line, and what you really want is a more smooth line. Uh, you can see here I've highlighted some of the double pixels and you can see if I remove those pixels uh, we get a much more smoother line. So the problem that I see people doing is that they just get out the brush and they just start drawing a line and they say hey cool I got a little whale here and um, that is now pixel art. Yay! But you can see it looks kind of weird um, and if we removed all those doubles it would look much nicer. There's a few ways you can go about it. Some software has a pixel perfect option so when you start drawing it tries to emulate a perfect pixel line. This is only something more pixel focused programs has and not something that a software like Photoshop has. The way you can get around it if you are using Photoshop is that you can also hold down shift and click between two points and you can drag a line like that. That is also a way you can go about it or you can use the line tool in most softwares. <laughs> so you can definitely see the difference between a poorly made line and a more controlled line. And I'll definitely recommend you doing a only one pixel white line at first and try to avoid doubles as much as you can. With that said, it doesn't mean you can create things with doubles, but you have to have a much more better understand on how to abuse the doubles. So if you are less experienced with making lines, I definitely recommend just sticking to a single pixel line. On the topic of lines, you don't only have to make a single pixel white line, you can also make a two pixel white line, though I would only recommend doing that for outlines of thing, because if you start making the things inside the sprite two pixel white, it's gonna look a little weird. Or you can make a single line with anti-aliasing on it. There's not really anything right or wrong, but there's something that looks more pleasing and something that is more recommended than other things. But I'll definitely, again, emphasize on just trying to stick with a single pixel line at first. Oh, the next topic is something a lot of people do. And it's something that I've been asked about a lot. So let's get into the basic of jaggies. So what is a jaggy? Well, in short, jaggies is when a line sort of breaks like here. You can see it goes down smooth and there comes this like weird section where it breaks and it goes down smooth and weird section where it breaks. And what you really want is a consistent straight line. It doesn't have to be one pixel every time. It can be like two pixels down all the time. You just want to have a consistent even looking pattern out through the entire thing. So here are some examples of broken lines that's been fixed. You can see on the left side there's a broken line, on the right side there is an even line. Uh, and you can clearly see a difference in some of them. And I've done a little highlight where the line are broken so you can see kind of what I've done to fix it. These are just some examples and we'll dig a little deeper into my technique of fixing a broken line. So here we have a very common mistake that I see a lot of people do. On the left side we have a broken line and on the right side we have a fixed line. I don't know if you can see where the line is broken and where it's fixed, but let's try and highlight it up. So if we look down here on the fixed line, my technique when I'm doing a curved line and I don't want it to be jacky, what I usually tend to do is that I think of it as a pattern. So for example, we have four here, three, two, one, 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 two, three, five, and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense other than the number goes down and up and there's never a number uh, greater in between two numbers. See, I told you, it doesn't make any sense. So let's look a little bit closer at it and I'll explain it to you in a way that it makes a little more sense. So if we look closer at the right pattern and the, my way of making sure that my line is not jaggy is that I always check, okay, so we have four, three, and two. So let's take four and two. What is the number between four and two? Well, that is three, fine. This, this one is not jaggy. So let's take three, and one. What is the number between three and one? Well, that's two, okay, so the line is still not jaggy. 
So here we got 2 and 1, and the number between 2 and 1 is 1 and a half, but you can't put in a half pixel. So the way I always look about it is that a smaller number always have a bigger priority than a greater number. So if I had to either put 1 or 2 here, the smallest number of 1 or 2 is 1. So 1 get a priority. But you eventually will have to make the numbers great again, because when we get down to 1, the line is just going to stop. It's always going to be 1, 1, 1. Uh, so when you feel like you got a nice curve, you just start adding up numbers again. Depending on how you want your curve to be, you can do it in different ways. So we start out again, we make sure that 1 and 3, the number is 2. But when we get over to 2 and 5 here, we can again have 3.5. So what you have to do is take the smallest number and make that a priority. And that is my way of making sure that a curve line is not jacky. I don't know if anybody else have done it this way, but I think it's a good way of making sure that your line is not jacky. And the mistake that I see the most people do is that they have smaller, greater, smaller, greater numbers and it doesn't have a proper pattern to it. And then it makes this sort of jacky line. I actually just came up with this technique as I was making the tutorial and I've never try to put out to words how I go about making a curve line, but this works for me and I think it's a great way to think about it. So the next topic I want to talk about is outlines and a few common mistakes I see and a few tips I can give you on how to improve your outlines. So on the top row here we have how not to do outlines and on the bottom row we have how to do outlines. So let's look a little closer at it and I'll point out some of the mistakes that I see. So I'm going to color all the mistakes out with a uh, very bright gray so you can see where I'm actually placing them. So if we look at the cherry here, first of all, you can see up here on the leaf, I made it sharp down here below. And the reason I'm doing that is because the leaf is pointy. And by having a round edge like this, you make the leaves look round. So to make sure that you can see that it's a pointy leaf, you place the pixel there. And what pixel art is really about is making one pixel illustrate as much as possible. So just by placing one pixel there, we make sure that the leaf looks more sharp and pointy. The same goes for over here. Although the black line is not sharp, you can make the leaf looks more sharp just by placing a white pixel there on your white outline. So when you're doing outline, this is a smart technique you can do to make things a little more pointy at certain places or round at certain places. Another thing I want to show is that in here you can see there is one single transparent pixel. And if you find a gap within your sprite that has this sort of like a few transparent pixels outside of the outline inside the sprite, you just really want to fill the entire thing out. Because by doing that, you're not distracting the eye with that one pixel that might be flashing if you have done a moving background. So let's look at the next one here. So there's a few things we can do here. For example, I made a white dot here just to sort of make sure that it has this sort of stick feel. Um, I can't really explain why I do that. I just feel like it looks nicer. Uh, although down here, I do want to make it a little sharper because it's supposed to look more sharp like I talked about before. Though we are encountering a different problem over here. So you can see down here on the bottom, I made one pixel there. And the reason I'm doing that is because if we have that one pixel open, it's going to be a little bit distracting and these two is going to look far more apart. So by putting a pixel there, they look a little closer. And though the black line has a space there, the focus is not making them spread apart more. So they look more together and the gap looks quite smaller. Though if we look at the pineapple, I've done the complete opposite. So I've actually left the gap here because I want the two leaves to look more apart. And not by filling the outline there, you make the two leaves look more apart. So you really want to think about, are these things supposed to look closer or far apart? And of course, you can see I made a white pixel here as well to make the leaves more pointy. And that is a thing you can keep in mind to illustrate what your art is supposed to look like with the pixel a little more. Alright guys, so the last thing I want to do here is make an outline on Sonic so you can see how you should do it. And while I do it, I'll talk a bit about what I'm thinking and why I'm doing certain things. And on the left side here, you can see how you're not supposed to do it. Alright, so let's just do it. So I'm going to start zooming in here and just start somewhere. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter where you start, but I just pick a random place. Uh, because Sonic's ear is pointy up there, I'm just going to make uh, it's a sharp corner. Uh, you can see here if I do it like that on his nose, his nose is going to be 
kind of weird looking so I tend to sometimes make a white pixel above just because it makes the nose look more pointy again and depending if you're doing it up here or down here uh, it's it's the direction the nose is going to be pointing so by doing a white outline there it's going to be looking more pointing upward all right so let's just continue nothing big here uh, just following the lines you know I could do one line here to give the thumb a little more um, sharp edge but I don't think I'm gonna do that because it's gonna look a little odd because we have two pixels two pixels yeah I don't know I'm just not gonna do it uh, I can't explain that one all right so let's fill up the gap we go down to the shore and down here on the bottom I want to make a sharp corner because the shoe is sharp down there and I do also want to make one here as well I don't want to leave it like that I want to make it sharp like that as well though the shoe is round over here so I'm just gonna make a single and then I'm gonna do singles here as well and yeah I might actually make a double here just to make it look kind of sharp here we encounter a weird little problem uh, because you can see if I fill this out there's gonna be a big white chunk here so I could either do this to make it look more pointy the other direction or fill it out like that to have a bigger white chunk together but I don't like that so I'm actually gonna make this spike point the other way and then just keep continuing up here and when we get to this spike I'm gonna make it sharp down on the bottom as well and just continue like this follow his edge and then make it sharp on the other ear as well <laughs> oh I almost forgot we also need to of course follow in the inside here to get the white outline on the inside bits and that is how I make a white outline on things manually of course there are tools that can do it for you but it won't take this thing in mind of a sharp edge or soft edge so if you want to get it perfect you have to do it manually and uh, I just personally prefer that Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to give the videos a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. You can also support me on Patreon where you can help me help you. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!